I am happy to be here with my good friend, Kevin Lipson. I've always said to Kevin that he is my favorite energy lawyer that has season tickets to the Packers. There is no one I like more with those two stipulations. I mean it when I say that. Thank you. And uh, I've known Kevin for close to 10 years now, I want to say. Uh, and uh, it all started with a uh, Paddock Philippe 5960P, which is not here, but many of these are uh, Govberg watches. and. I think I got you, you know, early in your collecting game, I would say. Uh, and it's in been my second phase of collecting. In your collecting. second phase yes. of collecting. And it's been very cool watching you change your preferences. And uh, you've put together a, an awesome collection, which I'm uh, really looking forward to talking about. So I'm happy that you're here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I started with Rolex when I was a young guy, about 140 years ago. I, uh, <laughs> I began with a two-tone Daytona. And I, I remember going to, uh, it was the first really big expenditure I, I made, and my wife was freaking out that I was going to spend this money on a watch. And I went to the Rolex jeweler, and he showed me this two-tone Daytona with a white dial, and it was really flashy. And uh, I said, does it keep good time? And he said, son, you don't wear a Rolex to keep good time. So tell me about these that you have now. You have the classic 116-520, the right. all-steel uh, all Daytona, steel, yeah. and then you have the... Govberg purchase here, uh, the new uh, stainless and ceramic. Yes. And then you have the vintage. Yes. Which do you like the most and why? Loaded question, different price points. I mean, you know, tell, tell me about these three, you know, well, what they mean to you. They have, I think they have different purposes. The watch that I admire the most is the vintage. Uh, I bought that for, from the original owner original box and papers, including the outer box. If you turn it over, you can see the inscription to the original owner. It was a college graduation gift to the original owner. My parents gave me a pair of shoes. This guy's parents gave him this watch. He made and out better than you He did. did. Well, I have a very nice pair of shoes from it. <laughs> no, but he did make out better. So that, I love that watch because it's a, a 62-63 with a Bakelite bezel. It's in great condition, never been polished. Original box and papers. And uh, it's kind of a classic watch. It's, it wears bigger than it is. I think it's a 39 millimeter and it, it wears bigger. It's, a, it's just a beautiful watch, floating red Daytona. This is one of my favorite stories ever when it comes to uh, a, a watch purchase. Uh, leave it to Kevin, uh, not, a, not a bashful, shy individual. Uh, we went, uh, it was 2011, was it? We 2003. 2013, we went uh, to Geneva on a paddock factory trip, and we were in the executive dining room getting to uh, have lunch with But that uh, wasn't Terry the first Stern. time it happened. When was the first time? Oh, that's right. You, I remember you telling me that you asked <laughs> oh, him once right. before. I'll let you so tell. So I, I was invited to the opening of a Geary's Paddock Philippe Salon in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you have to recognize, I'm not the Sultan of Brunei. I'm not a, a major collector. I own two Paddock Philippe watches at the time. But I was fortunate enough to be invited to this opening. And uh, I met Thierry Stern, the president of Paddock Philippe, and I asked him if he would make a 5130, which is the Paddock Philippe world time, with Jerusalem on the dial. Because they had made it with uh, Mecca on the dial and other... Different Arab cities, capitals right. on the dial, and I thought it would be very nice to have one made with Jerusalem on the dial. And he politely said no. And then I came to a Paddock Philippe event hosted by Govberg in Philadelphia at the Franklin Center, right. Franklin Institute, and I school. met uh, Thierry Stern again, and I said, I don't know if you remember me, and he said, yes, I do. And he Can't said, forget this guy. He said, you would like a 5130 with Jerusalem on the dial? I said, yes, I would, and he said, no, I won't make it. And uh, third th time was the charm. Third time was the charm. We were, uh, we went to visit Paddock Philippe, or had the opportunity to actually see how these things are made, and it's an extraordinary opportunity, obviously, for which I'm very thankful. And uh, I sat next to Terry Stern, and I reminded him, and he actually agreed. 
instantly. instantly. I saw it. Yes. It was crazy. To I couldn't make... believe it. It was almost like an awkward silence afterwards. Yes. You know, will you put Jerusalem on the world time for me? Yes. Like instantly. And it was almost like he was prepared for, oh, I know that guy. He's got me again. You know what? I'm in a good mood. I'm going to do it. And, I and, was he, like, and he agreed oh, to do it. it. awesome. And he agreed to make, I think, seven of them. And uh, most of the people around the table wanted one with a white gold case. And I asked for one in a rose gold case. And that's it. I, I've always had a fascination with history. So th this watch is an example. I actually bought this for my dad in 1996. And uh, my father was a kind of a ham-fisted guy, very athletic guy. Uh, and he could not figure out the three crowns here. And so what do in, those do? invariably, when he was setting the time, he would pull off the chronograph crown. And so I replaced the crowns for him literally a half a dozen times. <laughs> and I actually, when he passed away in 2011, I was going through a, a drawer of his and I found this watch at the bottom of the drawer and uh, I had it restored, but I kept the bezel because as you can see, he beat the crap out of the bezel, <laughs> which was just the way he took care it of watches. It wouldn't have been right for you to replace it. Right, it's and great. so that's what I like about vintage watches. They're worn and they, uh, they tell a story. Sometimes it's not your story, but uh, in a sense, these all become your story. These watches uh, mark experiences in your life. I, I don't attach any great uh, historical significance to it. It's just they're markers of, of your time here. What are your latest purchases here? I know you got this last summer. We got it, got it through us. The fifty-five twenty-two. Yeah, you know, tell, this, tell me about. Yeah, I know that you you were you were hot for that one. You really wanted that. Yeah, one. I, I I love this watch. I think it's a it's a controversial watch. People will say it looks like a fossil watch, or it looks like an IWC pilot watch. It's too big. It's you know, you too hear all big. The, the, you know. the loom on this thing is unbelievable. Awesome. Love you, it. It's like a clock. Uh, it's it's great and it's very plain. I'm not attracted to everything that's super fancy and. Uh, you know, conveys that kind of prestige. This is one of my favorite I watches just about here. To, yeah, this G-Shock. What made you? What made you want to take this one? Well, to me, there's a lesson in this, and that is that you buy and you collect what you love, and you don't do it because you're trying to impress somebody, or you don't do it because you read about it in a magazine. Too many people do that. They go on these forums and they're like, oh, you should get this. And I've, I hear it all the time from, from selling to people. Uh, they, they learn afterwards, the, you know, the hard way where, oh, I was gonna get this, but everyone told me I needed to get this because I needed to be concerned about the value retention and everything. And you know what, now I realize that this is the one that made me happy. I had to sell the one that everyone told me that I should have gotten. And I wish I had just bought it the, you know, the exactly. one that I wanted the first time. Exactly, so look, I, I, uh, this one, is the 35th anniversary, I believe they call it the full metal jacket, uh, <laughs> gold stainless steel watch. It, to me, it's just cool. I mean, honestly, I don't. Uh, I How just, often do you wear that thing? And when? Not very often. I wear do it. Do you wear that on trial? No, no, I don't. I've never worn that while uh, while representing a client. But I do. I do wear it on the weekends and. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. You know, this design has never changed in 35 years. Yeah. And uh, still doing well now, the brand. Right. Yeah, it has so like I a very big cult following, you know. There's something to that. And and I just think it's kind of cool looking. And uh, uh, honestly, it attracts a lot of attention. And I collect sneakers too. So when you wear this with uh, sneakers, it's, uh, I like it.